The Little Mill Girls, a short documentary. The Lowell Mills were factories that operated in the city of Lowell, Massachusetts during the 19th and early 20th centuries. The founder and mastermind behind the factories was American businessman Francis Cabot Lowell. Mr. Lowell is responsible for bringing the Industrial Revolution to the United States. After a couple of years of studying the inner workings of the textile industry in Great Britain, he came back to America and with his newfound knowledge, Francis Cabot Lowell formed the Boston Manufacturing Company with help from his brother and a few other business associates. Their waterways in Loyal, Massachusetts were great for powering the new company's power looms. The co company began to expand rapidly along with the rest of the textile industry. Women between the ages of 13 and 35 were recruited from New England farms to work at the mills. The women worked long hours, usually 13 to 15 hours a day. The women originally went to the mills with high hopes. Some wanted to break free from parental authority, all were able to earn their own money, and the women also had better educational opportunities. They were responsible for operating the machines and producing the product. While at the mills, the women went through a lot. The women worked just as hard as the men, but still were paid half of a man's pay, and sometimes even less. Although they worked hard for their money, it hardly ever went to them. Instead, it usually went to their husbands or fathers, because women were not allowed to own anything. Also, if a woman made even the slightest mistake while operating the machines, she would get severe, severely injured. The women stayed in company boarding houses, which had a strict set of rules, including church attendance and curfews. The number of factories in Lowell and in other mill towns had increased. In 1834 and again in 1836, there were many mills and this led to overproduction, which then led to a drop in the prices and profits for the companies. In 1834 and again in 1836, the mill owners dropped the women's wages and speeded up their work pace in hopes of solving their financial difficulty. This is when the women decided to take action. The girls stood together to strike in protest for better treatment and pay. Unfortunately, it didn't have the impact they were hoping for. The overproduction of textiles had already caused the market to slow down. Therefore, the mill owners could afford to do without some workers. So factory owners fired the women who held the strikes in protest. Although the strikes and protests did not turn out in favor of the women, it laid the path for further actions against male owners and for women's rights in general. The law offering was organized in 1840 by Reverend Abel Charles Thomas. The law offering was a monthly magazine that collected works of poetry, ballads, essays, and fiction from the women of the mills. The women's writings often used their characters to report on the conditions and situations in their lives. This was a stepping stone for women in history because the women's work was getting published and many were able to read it. The five-year magazine also gave people a perspective of what it was like to be a male girl. In 1845, a dozen of the Lowell male girls start the first organization of working women to come together and negotiate for better working conditions and higher pay. The organization was called the Lowell Female Labor Reform Association, or the LFLRA. The association was known for standing up to authority and getting involved in both positions and strikes to improve the working conditions. The Lowell Female Labor Reform Association organized petition campaigns asking the Massachusetts State Legislature to stop the workday at 10 hours. The women managed to get 2,000 signers on an 1845 petition and more than double that on a petition the next year. The women organized chapters in New Hampshire as well, and in 1847, New Hampshire became the first state to pass a 10-hour workday law. They also published fa factory tracts, which were flyers that they would hand out to expose the conditions in the mills.